Hi, this is Pastor Doug with uh, today's devotional today. And we've been in the series called Unicorn, Chasing After the Impossible. And we've been looking at the very powerful but actually humanly impossible process of transformation. That as we open our lives to God, he can transform us into the image of Christ. And the first week we looked at how we can be transformed by the gospel, by the good news. Last week we looked at being transformed into the gospel where we become more and more like Jesus. But this week we're going to be looking at being transformed for the gospel. That our transformed lives are not just for ourselves, but God uses our transformation to bless others, to influence them so that they can know God and that they too can be transformed. So our passage today is found in Psalm 57, starting in verse 7. So let's read it together. It says, My heart, O God, is steadfast. My heart is steadfast. I will sing and make music. Awake, my soul. Awake, harp and lyre. I will awaken the dawn. I will praise you, Lord, among the nations. I will sing of you among the peoples. For great is your love, reaching to the heavens. And your faithfulness reaches to the skies. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, and let your glory be over all the earth. Wow. The psalmist, who is David here, is super excited. He's super pumped up. He wants to tell everyone about the goodness of God. He wants to tell the nations. He wants to tell the people. He's saying, I'm awake. I'm alive. God has done something amazing in my life. Yeah, and, and what's, real, what's really cool about this is that this comes after a time where David was super despondent. In fact, we looked just a verse or two before. It, it says that David is under attack, that his enemies are after him, and he's losing hope. And he, in fact, he cries out to God, save me, save me, Lord. And then comes a very powerful transformational moment. In fact, uh, in verse 6, it says, David says that the enemies have dug a pit for him and God showed up and the enemies are now the ones that fall into the pit. Now, you might be wondering, what's all that about? One cool thing about the psalm is sometimes it gives us a little indication of where this came from. And so if we look at the very beginning of the psalm, even before verse 1, it says that this is a psalm of David when David had fled from Saul into the cave. And that's a story that we find in the Old Testament in 1 Samuel chapter 24. Uh, talks about this story. So let's, let's see what's, what's, what's in there. Now this, this story is about when King Saul was running after David, pursuing him, and he wanted to kill David because out of envy and, and jealousy. And so Saul and his armies are chasing David all over the place, and they they end up in this desert, and, and, and David's hiding out in this cave. Now, the, the interesting thing about this particular chapter, it talks about something that's a little bit on the humor side. You see, King Saul has to go to the bathroom, but there are no porta potties out in the middle of the desert. So he had to find a cave to go relieve himself. Well, it just so happened that the cave that he chose to go into to to relieve himself, to go potty, was the very cave that David was hiding out. And you, you might think, oh, so this is the transforming moment that David's singing about in Psalm 57. But it's not. Because even though David had an opportunity to, to actually kill King Saul, because he was by himself, uh, he was very vulnerable, uh, God met him in that moment. And, and, and I, I bet that David's intention was to kill Saul, but God met him. And we see this in verse 4 and 5 of chapter 24 of 1 Samuel. It says that David was uh, stricken in his conscience. You see, God convicted him. While the first intent and the easy thing to do was to kill Saul, uh, God said, no, I don't want you to do that. I want you to trust in me. 
And so what David did is David cut off a corner of Saul's robe undetected. And then later on, we read in the passage that David confronted Saul, but in a very humble way. And basically, he said to Saul, you know, I had a chance to kill you, but the Lord would not let me touch you. He says, may the Lord judge between you and me. And may Lord, the Lord avenge the wrongs that you have done to me, but my hand will not touch you. As the old saying goes, from evildoers comes evil deeds. So my hand will not touch you. Wow. That's the transforming moment. That's the moment that David sings about, that conviction of a spirit that, that, that changed his mind, that renewed his thinking, that told him, do not kill Saul, but to trust in God. And that's what he was singing about. That's what he wanted to tell everyone about. You know, when, when God transforms our life, when he does an act of transformation in our life, it's so powerful. It's so powerful that you, you want to tell people about it. You want to let them know that, hey, if God can do this in my life, he can do this in your life too. He can transform you. He can change you for the good. And so I want us to take some time to reflect. How has God transformed your life? You know, in, in Rooted, we, we take time to reflect on this. We actually write it down in a story, and we look for an opportunity to share that story with someone that we know. And maybe that's what God is leading you to do today, to share a little bit of your story, to uh, help people to be transformed by the gospel themselves. Uh, it, may, it, may, it might be a co-worker, it might be a colleague, it might be a neighbor, it might be a family member. Or maybe you realize that, you know, I'm not sure if I've experienced transformation. I'm not sure if I've experienced real life change. So, so maybe I can encourage you to do this, to, to take Rooted. Take Rooted, because Rooted will help you understand how God works. It will give you opportunities to experience God and to experience life transformation in, in Him. There's still time for, to register for Rooted. Just go to findcommunity.com slash Rooted. So as we think about how we can be transformed for the gospel, let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for this tremendous example of David. You are in the business of transforming our lives. And we pray that you would use our transformed lives to let others know that you can transform their lives as well. So Lord, we pray that you would give us opportunity to share our story with other people. As David writes in the Psalm, for great is your Lord, O God. It reaches to the heavens and your faithfulness reaches to the skies. So, Lord, through my life, be exalted, O oh God. Be exalted above the heavens and let your glory be over all the earth. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right.